It's very well put and it's wonderful. And and one of the wonderful things is that so the, the techniques that you develop as a let's say a PhD student or a postdoc or someone who's working in this area, the techniques that you develop to try to understand what the black hole is doing are the same techniques you need if you want to understand how quantum computers work. So, and that's a real cool. engineering question as well as a fundamental physics question. You know, we're trying to build these things. We, we haven't built one that works in the way we want to yet, but obviously Google and Microsoft and IBM and, uh, and others are pouring a lot of money into it because they're profoundly powerful mm -hmm. devices. But the insight, a lot of insight now into how they might work and how we might build them is coming from this field of emergent space time. So it's the best example I know of, you know, if you say to a, a funding agency, um, I want to, I want money from to, to work on black holes. They go, well, they, they, fortunately they do give us some money, <laughs> but they often will go, what is it any use? I mean, what the yeah. point, you know, a black hole, what, does anybody care? Um, it, the lesson is that when you study nature, and you go to the, the, you try to study things that you don't you don't understand that uh, pose profound questions about our understanding of physics in this case. Then you are, I would say, likely to learn something useful because you're studying reality. And this is the best example of that that I know, for, because you're studying completely collapsed stars or the things at the hearts of galaxies. And you're gaining insight into quantum computers and networks of qubits and quantum information. It's, it's the most wonderful thing.